Good morning, everyone. I'm going to jump straight into it um, and tell you about a very practical toolkit that we've developed for the tourism and energy sector. And it has always already been teed up nicely for me by Fiona. Um, but I think it's very applicable to all of us working in the public sector as well. And just having a quick chat with Mary Gregg from Revenue uh, over coffee, I was reflecting that when we engaged with public bodies through the Excellence Through Accessibility Award in 2004, 2005, 2006, very often the first thing we said to people was, get an audit done, get in training, get consultants in. And now, because of the situation that we're in, all our guidance is very much about being able to pick up a document like accessibility and procurement, like this toolkit on customer engagement that I'm going to tell you about, being able to pick up a document and start using it straight away. So very much a kind of a self-service approach to the guidance that we provide. So the document I'm going to talk to you about came out of two standards. One you've heard of already, which was the SWIFT 9 for the energy, uh, uh, for the energy sector. And the second was a standard the first national standard um, or standard we're aware of any place else on universal design for customer engagement in the tourism industry. Now this was quite different to the um, uh, energy uh, SWIFT document in that this is very much a voluntary standard. So the tourism sector is in no means obliged to use this. And this was developed by ourselves with NSAI in conjunction with people like the Equality Authority in Falcha, Ireland. But as the development of the standard was ongoing, it was obvious that we needed something to be able to give to the BNB and to the tour operator and to the hotel change, so, chain so they could give it to staff to use every day. So we developed a series of toolkits, one looking at the business case for good universal design and customer engagement, the other looking at written communication, face-to-face -face and web. And again, it's based on the principles and the definition of universal design. So it's looking at making customer engagement better for everyone, not just customers with disabilities, but also facilitating customers with disabilities. Um, and, and essentially, the, the message we wanted to get to the tourism sector is that your customers come in all shapes and sizes. Don't turn anyone away. Be as accommodating as possible to everyone, because that just makes good business sense. Um, the toolkits are designed to be very practical and to give, they give checklists, they give good and bad examples, they give scenarios, they give personas, and these, uh, these uh, images on the screen of, of people are, are a family called the normals that we developed, and we're using them in a variety of different resources now. Um, so there's Betty Normal, who's a, a mom, and she's quite tall. There is Daddy Normal, who is a little bit robust um, and wide around the waist. Um, and there's different members of the Normal family. Um, each of them have got their own unique characteristics, which mean that in any given service situation, they might have a particular requirement. This morning has been quite webby, and I'm just going to throw up a couple of images and examples from the guidance that show um, the type of level of guidance that we're giving. So in the document on web, uh, we give good and bad examples. An example here, of course, is the CAPTCHA, which is used, still used quite a bit in the public sector. Um, and in another project that we did, we did some user testing done by NCBI and Joshua, uh, Joshua Connor, who's in the audience here today, where we looked at CAPTCHAs. And CAPTCHAs for blind people are now unusable. That is the way it is. It's not that they're difficult to use, okay? They're unusable it is impossible to understand the audio version of these captures. Um, so that's one quite clear recommendation. But again, just looking at other things such as um, accommodating a range of literacy skills. Um, and again, saying, you know, sometimes there's a misconception. This all has to be dumbed down and very plain. In fact, we encourage the use of color to highlight particular types of text a particularly important piece of information um, on the screen as well as images. Um, and again, some guidance here on trying to make your navigation and the layout of the page as consistent as possible. 
On screen at the moment is an image of what a typical page and the guidance look like. So you'll get a good and bad example, a scenario, some bullet points, some further reading, and a checklist that can be pulled out and put up, stuck on the notice board in the staff canteen on five points to think of around universal design for good face-to-face -face communication, for example, or seven points to think of when writing a document or a leaflet so that it's as, un as un understandable as possible to everyone. So a little bit of information about the, the development of the standard and the toolkit coming up. This was the development process that we used. Of course, it was a universal design process. We didn't just make this up on our own. Um, we engaged with the right number of uh, um, uh, stakeholders. And we held master classes as well. We did an early draft of the toolkit. And we brought people in. And many of the people who were involved in this are here today. They would be organizations that we collaborate with quite a bit. Um, uh, and we got them get their feedback on what it, on on the the use of the tool the, the toolkit, um, and that informed then the final version of the toolkit. So some feedback that we're getting from the the tourism sector is, is that two thirds of customers spend an average of thirteen percent more with services that provide good customer service. And one quote we got from a hotelier in the west of Ireland was that we implemented training using the toolkit to improve our customer engagement. And this has resulted in a 40% increase in our food sales. Now, of course, we in the public sector are perhaps not really attuned to things like return on investment um, and, and customer loyalty. As someone earlier said, the public have to use our services. But I think. From another piece of research that we did on the lived experience of people in Ireland using e-government services, uh, the efficiency for, for public sector organizations in providing a good customer service channel um, can also be quantified. Um, and, and this quotation from one public service web manager said that if we can make our information understandable and accessible on our website, then that reduces the amount of time we spend answering emails and phone calls. And they have quantified it. They have measured the amount of time it takes to service a query on the website versus one via phone versus one via email. And it was interesting to me here that actually it's quicker over the phone very often. People get to the point of their query quicker than in a dialogue over email um, where they may ask several questions before they get to the, the nub of the issue. So I'd just like to show you a little video that we developed uh, demonstrating the toolkit and giving a little bit more information on it. I'll just swipe here now. Here we go. <laughs> encourages good practice and has mandated all countries to adopt universal design where possible. We see universal design as best practice on be it from a service perspective or it could be on designing products. What we see as great customer engagement is starting with how you design your service. Has the customer had a positive experience in engaging with your service? Universal design sounds very high-tech, but it's actually common sense applied well. And this standard really does give a very easy reference point. The feedback we get from stakeholders is principally don't assume that you know what any customer wants, be they somebody with a disability or any other uh, issue. Uh, ask them, and very often, for very little, you can accommodate what they need. I think one of the primary challenges for the tourism industry is it's a series of points of communication from the initial point of going on the website or picking up the phone and dealing with one person and then walking into the establishment and me meeting a series of different people. And so the challenge for the industry or for a business is to try and have all of those different communications by different people at different times, multiple points of contact, have those consistent. That's a, a comprehensive challenge for anybody in the tourism business. Communication is the core of our business. You have to be able to communicate properly when you're in this industry. You're asked a variety of different things um, every day, like and no two days are the, are the same. 
um, in relation to things that they ask you, they ask you about the area, what's there to do, the kind of different drives they, they can take in that. Equality is central to customer service. If you don't have equality at the centre, equality and diversity, and uh, embracing all of the differences that individuals who are customers of yours can uh, bring to your uh, business, then you're not dealing with good customer service, you're not providing good customer service. Our visitors have a heightened expectation when they come to Ireland because of our reputation for hospitality. If we fail to deliver on that, on that experience as a tourism industry, we're endangering that great reputation. So to have a basic standard uh, in terms of communication will be critical going forward. The beauty of doing this to standards is it's a voluntary process. It's written by the users for the users uh, and use the standard as a reference point but it's not a regulation, it's not something forced on the industry. The standard itself sets out the general principles and really the commitment to do this properly. The annexes to the standards give a little bit more detail and some more specifics. But then you come to the next level, the toolkit that accompanies this standard, where it really does give examples of good practice and bad practice that will help every single player in the tourism industry to get their literature and get their information um, aligned with the, the best practice. We would have researched this not only at a national level but also internationally what is best practice uh, so we're able to actually quantify this, put it in the toolkits so that the, the service providers themselves uh, can easily follow it. So the idea of the toolkits, it's they're very easy to use. As in there's checklists on the back, so uh, within five minutes you, you know how to actually improve your greetings. The three uh, toolkits, one is web communication. How do you actually present information on the web that most people can easily understand, but also can easily navigate through a website? Number two is written and telephone communication. The critical ingredients, how do you actually present information on an email uh, or over the telephone? So it's removing jargon. People don't understand the terms that may be used in the industry. And then finally, the face-to-face the -face communication is greeting that person as they come into your establishment, whatever that may be. I suppose the crucial and, and what uh, brings them all together is that the customer feels that they have a very positive experience in engaging with that service. If you wish to uh, engage in this and, and use it, we can guarantee that you staff will have a, a better experience in dealing with their customers. And number two, the customer themselves will have a better experience in being involved or working with your service. And the bottom line is that that will increase uh, your profits. The toolkit kind of will definitely help, I think, formalise um, some of the things that we want to put into, into practice here. Um, for example, like even in written, written communication in our menus, and kind of to keep them as, as, simple, as simple as possible. And just use the toolkit to maybe highlight different points, use experiences from maybe the, the last few customer encounters and use those as a means of introducing the toolkit and say, right, the toolkit can show us how to improve this, that situation where we went, went wrong last night at lunch or at dinner or whatever it was. It's well researched that investing in equality and diversity for a business is a good business model. In fact, it's a model of excellence and it enhances your market share, it pleases your customers and it ensures your continued survival. Players in the tourism industry, big and small, can just address good practice from something as simple as a restaurant menu to the documentation to the way they greet customers in reception and use very simple principles, common sense, very little investment involved and really have the marketing benefit of being at the forefront of good practice in Ireland and in Europe. It can only improve or enhance our reputation nationally and internationally and that's really important these days because that's what differentiates us with everybody else. It's the Cape Neal of Alta. Every business has got to build on this. If they do and they use this, they will benefit enormously. So uh, Alan gave you homework, um, I don't have any homework to give you, uh, only just to give you the, the toolkits, they're available on universaldesign.ie forward slash tourism, 
The uh, almost identical toolkits are also available there for the energy sector. Um, and another resource, universaldesign.ie forward slash web, uh, is uh, also uh, applicable here. It's essentially the same web guidance, but developed more with public sector bodies in mind. Um, so those are the, 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 the takeaways for you uh, from today. We're always uh, eager to hear how people get on, get on using these resources. So if you're considering using these as training tools or giving them out to staff or using them um, in developing a new product or service within your organization, a new website, um, uh, please let us know how you get on. And if you'd also like a copy of the video, please let me know. I haven't gotten around to putting it up on YouTube yet, but any day now. Thank you very much for your attention.